Hey, welcome back to the Guillemot Kayaks Workshop. I'm Nick Schotta and I'm continuing to work on the Micro Bootlegger Sport Strip Built Sea Kayak. Had a good weekend, got out paddling a little bit. Um, also spent some time putting it together IKEA furniture, but there you go. It was my hope to apply finish to the interior of the boat today. But my plan is to use an automotive clear coat that comes in a rattle can. It's a two-part clear coat and you spray it out with you know aerosol can just like normal spray paint it's pretty nasty stuff i don't want to use it inside my shop i want to use it outside just for better ventilation it's kind of a rainy day today and the weather forecast is a little bit uncertain so i'm not going to do that until i know i have a good day tomorrow should be a good day so my plan is to spray that clear coat tomorrow that may still be the same episode but at this point, starting out today, I'm just going to work on some of the other projects that need to get done. And then we'll see what happens tomorrow. So what I want to work on today is the backrest still needs some work. And I need a little bit more work on the seat itself. So we'll see what we can get to along those lines. This backrest blank's been in the clamps since I glued it up whenever that was a week or so ago. Um, so we'll just unclamp it. I want to cut out a bunch of blanks of this pattern I made previously and I'm just going to attach that to there and then use the bandsaw to cut that out. A little uh, 3M77. Alright, bring this over the bandsaw and cut it out. I have a fairly new blade in here. It's a little narrow for this long a cut. We'll see how it goes. I might need to swap the blade out. I should be able to get a few out of here. So while I was working on these in the belt sander, I had a little ponder about uh, how I'm going to approach these and what I'm thinking I'm going to finish up the cleaning of the back side so this is the front side this is the back side and I'm going to apply a layer of carbon Kevlar to the back side once that's done I will cut out the actual shape of the backrest from this and then do some final shaping and glass the front side so the back side will be carbon Kevlar the front side will be glass and so I just want to get things nicely cleaned up here in prep for the carbon Kevlar so it doesn't need to be perfectly smooth but I want everything nice and fair so you know it, I don't care about scratches the carbon Kevlar will hide the scratches but I want everything nice and fair so the bell sander did the initial fairing now I'll hit it with some uh, 60 grit with my little random orbital I'll do some more leveling with the uh, firm pad I'm really pretty excited about the color of these. 
and the grain pattern I think this will look pretty nice um, this will be the top and this is going to kind of follow the contour of the backrest I think that will look cool while I'm here with the sander in my hand um, I figure I might as well work on sanding the front side a little bit as, as well start to get that in shape here I have the the drop the last cut off um, from the blank and I can just place these in there as a uh, convenient cradle to hold them. Kevlar is hard to cut. Um, if I took my regular fiberglass scissors, which are nice and sharp, I keep them pretty sharp, but if I try and cut the Kevlar with it, just nothing happens. These good and sharp scissors, you see it just folds up, mangles up the cloth, really d makes, doesn't even start to cut it. But I have these scissors that I use only for Kevlar, and these cuts it quite easily. I'm not exactly sure how these are sharpened differently. They are sharpened differently, and they are very sharp as well. I can cut other synthetics, so polyester, nylon, that sort of thing cuts just fine. Cutting the carbon fiber, again, this is a carbon Kevlar, that does not hurt these. Um, but if I were to cut fiberglass, they wouldn't work anymore. The fact that Kevlar doesn't cut easily is part of what makes it good for building boats. Um, it's very tenacious stuff. The carbon Kevlar on the hull of the boat will hold the boat together even when other fabrics fail. Even after the bond with the epoxy and the Kevlar has failed, the Kevlar will still be there holding everything together. Where the carbon fiber breaks and the clean break and the fiberglass will completely separate, the Kevlar holds together and is very tenacious. And so in the context of a kayak, if you hit something hard enough, you hit a rock hard enough to break the wood, to break the epoxy, to break the fiberglass and carbon fiber, the Kevlar will hold all the pieces together. And obviously, a boat that has all the pieces there is a lot easier to repair, um, especially in a field repair. You can just duct tape up a boat. If all the pieces are still there, just put duct tape over the cracks and the boat will be good to go. So my backrests are going to all get a layer of the carbon Kevlar on it. And for our purposes here, it's just aesthetics. We really don't need carbon Kevlar on the backrest, but it'll look cool. I want the backs of the backrest to be smooth, whereas with the interior of the boat, I wanted to leave some texture to make it not slippery. On the back side of the backrest, I want a smooth finish. And so to assist with that, I have this uh, peel ply. And essentially this is a uh, nylon cloth that does not bond well to the epoxy. And that's intentional. And what I do is I'll lay this down after laying down the fabric when it's all wet out and smooth this out on the surface of the fabric to make a smooth surface on the back of the backrest. When the epoxy is all hard, I can take and peel this off and leave a lightly textured surface. So it's just all it has left is 
the texture of this fine nylon cloth. It's not as heavily textured as the carbon Kevlar cloth. Let's see how many pieces I can get out of this piece I just cut. And see the my fiberglass scissors cut this just fine. Alright, so I have got four pieces of peel ply, four pieces of the uh, carbon Kevlar, and then ready to wet these out. And while I'm at it, I will do a fill coat on the interior of the seat and another light fill coat on the back side of the seat. I want to completely coat the seat top and bottom. To help with that, I have uh, a couple sheetrock screws into the bottom here. And I'll make a loop of string and uh, hang this seat like this. So any epoxy runs will run down the length instead of puddling down in the bottom here. So that will should help make a nice smooth surface on that and that I can hang up afterwards. Because I'm using the peel ply, I'm going to super saturate the carbon Kevlar. Like a poor man's vacuum bagging, the peel ply will help remove the excess resin from the layout. So we'll get it really well saturated here, all the way out to the edges. Let that soak in. Again, I, I want a little excess epoxy on here. That'll help the uh, peel ply do its trick. So I've squeezed out the excess resin off the edges and some of it squeezes through the peel ply. And again, once this epoxy hardens, the peel ply will get ripped off and it'll leave a pretty smooth surface there ready for the next step. Um, it'll only take minor sanding to make it really smooth. So now while I still have some epoxy going, I will uh, mix up a little bit more here and apply it to the seat. So that's it for today. I've got uh, the carbon Kevlar on the back of the backrest. I've got another fill coat on the seat. And hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to spray on that interior clear coat. We'll see what happens. Today is the day I spray the interior. I'm going to use a two-part clear coat that comes in a rattle can. The can has both parts in it. Somehow they're separated until you press a button and they mix together and you shake it up and get them ready to go. So this is pretty much the same stuff 
that you put on an automotive clear coat on the exterior. I'm going to be putting it on the interior. I do sometimes take things to the body shop, but at this point in the process, Getting time in at a body shop and having them spray just the interior just isn't worth it. So I'm going to use this rattle can technique. I've used this stuff a little bit before, but never this big a project. So my intention is to have a matte finish on the interior. I just like the looks of the matte finish on the interior. I have a couple cans of this spray clear coat. First, I'm going to just apply one full coat of the gloss. I think the gloss tends to be a little bit clearer, but then to give it the matte finish, I'll go over the whole thing with the matte clear coat. So we'll see how this goes. I'm, it's a beautiful day. It's going to be warm today, so I can bring everything outside, do it outside. Just the chemicals in this are nasty. I want good ventilation. I don't have that inside the shop here. I'd rather not have these chemicals inside the house. My, my, my shop is attached to the house and so smells that end up in the shop end up in the house. So by doing it outside hopefully I will minimize the exposure to everybody inside the house and be a little bit safer that way. It's probably not as good a controlled environment outside. There's some wind blowing, the sun's shining, things like that, but uh, that will be my plan. So in prep for doing all that, I want to mask off the studs and mask off the top inch and a half along the part line where I'm going to end up putting the seam tape. I don't want the clear coat in that area because that will interfere with a good bond between the epoxy. So we'll just start out with the masking. So I think I'm just about ready to spray the finish. I'm going to do one more clean out, just get rid of all the dust, and then move these outside and prop them up in a way that I can efficiently spray on the finish. So let me talk a little bit about the finish I'm going to be applying. So this is uh, Spray Max 2K Clear Glamour 3680061. So it's a regular spray can, um, but it, on the bottom it's got a so the second spray can. You take this red duber and you jam it on there and it releases the liquids and mixes them together. So first you gotta shake this for about two minutes and then shake it for another two minutes after releasing the, the stuff. So I'm, I'm not sure what the coverage of this is. It probably says um, I've got quite a few cans here ready to go. Like I said, this is a clear, and I'm going to be finishing it with a mat. So I'm going to lay down one or two coats of the clear, and then finish it off with one or two coats of the mat. Again, I think the clear tends to provide a clearer finish, but what the look I want is a mat finish. And then you just take this and you stick it on here. And This uh, dust is accumulated.
So that went pretty smoothly. I got three plus coats on the hull and you know two plus coats on the deck. I didn't try and get it quite as thick on the deck. I figured the amount of light that's going to get in there is substantially less. Um, and in the hull I concentrated primarily on the area in the cockpit. There's several coats over everything on the whole interior and so I think that'll be good. And you know one of the beauties of this stuff is it flashes off quickly so you can get a bunch of coats on in short order. So at this point I'm just going to peel off the masking tape. This stuff is dried to the touch almost immediately. It's very quick. This would probably be a good solution for the whole boat. You know, I'm not sure I'm ready to do it on a customer's boat, you know, for the exterior. Um, just my skill level in getting a good coat, I don't think is quite there yet. I don't mind doing it on the inside where it doesn't matter as much. As far as doing a, you know, legitimate automotive style clear coat, this is probably a good solution um, for people who are willing to try it. So I think I'm gonna leave these in the shop um, without doing other stuff in here, just let this set up. There's a little bit of smell coming off of it, it's probably okay, but I have enough other stuff to do that I don't need to sit in here and deal with the smell and get a little headache. So if you have any questions about what I just did, feel free to post them in the comments. So the next big step is to join the deck and hull together, and that will be getting them fit. So I need to clean up this uh, part line edge a little bit, um, and then I'll be running tape down the inside seam to join them together, but first I strap them together. So I think I might be able to start working on that the next episode. We'll see. If what you saw today was something new to you, give me a like. There's enough left to do in the future that if you're interested in this whole process, go ahead and hit subscribe. Turn on notifications if you want to be notified what's new. And if you want to support the production of more videos like this, please head over to my Patreon site. Any little bit of support's appreciated. So until the next episode, thanks for watching and happy paddling.